All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back. Let's go ahead on to chapter number two. Well, I'm as eager as you are to get to the bottom of the willful destruction of police evidence ace, but the Commissioner insists solving Maximilian Poe's murder is our highest priority. Unfortunately, we're a bit out of a stalemate. We, as soon as you're braced, my conscience will not allow me to remain silent any longer. I am the one who killed Maximilian Poe. Father Donovan, you're confessing to Mr. Poe's murder? Wait, murder? I thought he, I thought he committed suicide. Well, you're not making any sense. Ace, escort the good shepherd to the interrogation room so we can sort this out. Father Donovan, I insist you explain yourself. Did you or did you not kill Maximilian Poe? Well, metaphorically speaking, I thought I had. I was teaching my weekly penmanship class at the children's mission when I heard the dreadful news. I immediately assumed Max to take his own life in despair, that I had failed in my duties as a man of God. Maximilian had been seeking my spiritual counsel since the death of his wife. He wasn't getting any better, and I feared for his well-being. Well, I can assure you, Father Donovan, what happened to Maximilian Poe was not self-inflicted. Such a tragic end. They all start out so happy together, so much joy. Perhaps now, after all that's been suffered, they can be at peace together. Father Donovan, I hope you aren't suggesting that a man's murder is a good thing. Oh heavens, no. I was merely trying to find solace in the darkest of hours. Now I must return to the church and pray. If you don't mind, Father Donovan, Sonny Trooper Ace will come along. If Mr. Poe is a regular visitor at the church rectory, we would be wise to have a look ourselves. Hello, Mr. Kenta. Oh, I totally think Donovan's behind the immigrant problem. Totally. All right, so memorial picture. See the pile of books. See a sock. See a hat. I see a flute. And I see a teddy bear. Well, any noteworthy clues, Ace, eh, that pile of books is clear evidence that Father Donovan is quite messy, but I'm not sure how it pertains to this case. However, if you want to rummage through it, I shan't stop you. But this is a memorial photograph of the victim's wife, Valerie. Valeria. I tell them the photograph is not Maximilian Poe. Perhaps you can find a match in the public records, Ace. Eh? Uh, interesting. Alright, I'll change the thumbnail and the title. Chillax, chillax. Oh, this is the chief. No? We found a match on that photograph in the Concordia custom record. The man is Valerie's brother, ben Vincent Lorenzo. Here's the victim's brother-in-law arrived from Italy two weeks ago. We I to talk to Mr. Lorenzo and find out what he's been up to. I thought he was the chief. I was wrong. I was wrong. A sand corrected is that scrap of paper you found amongst those books is stained with blood. A worthy clue. Send this paper to Viola. There's but the slimmest of chances, but maybe this blood belongs to our victim. I agree. Maybe it does. Twelve hours will take it. Vincent Lorenzo, senior trooper ace, would like to ask you some questions about Maximilian Poe. My sister's husband? What about him? I'm afraid we have some grave news, Mr. Lorenzo. Your brother-in-law has been found murdered. Murdered? Mel, 
Hurts Valeria, and now this? Is Concordia a curse? Well, I assure you it's not. You've been here for a few weeks, Mr. Lorenzo. Did you meet with Mr. Poe? Well, that was my plan. I sailed from Italy as soon as I learned of the death of my sister. Valeria was so happy with her new life in Concordia, she wrote me such fancy letters. I learned calligraphy so I could write back. But now she's gone, and after coming all this way, I haven't even seen Maximilian Poe. I was too sad to face him. All I have left is that picture and clothes that smell like mothballs after the long journey. We would ask that you stay in Concordia, Mr. Lorenzo, until this matter has been cleared up. I wish you want to bet that everyone thought that Max killed his wife. They're just covering for him. Just a thought. Alright guys, I got 12 hours, gotta grab a lot of stars, I'll be right back. This has been Pichini 88 Au revoir. Alright folks, Pichini 88 we are back. Did you find anything of note from that scrap of paper, Viola? Undoubtedly. I took a sample of that blood and can confirm the type matches of the victims. Meaning? Meaning that the paper was discarded by the killer. Good show, Ace. Well now, I've had Evie look at those numbers. Oh, the numbers indeed. What did you find, Miss Holloway? Well, I'm rather squeamish when it comes to blood, Ace, so I did my best to work around that. The sequence meant nothing at first, but then I identified the torn symbol, and voila, it's the emblem of the New Haven Handsome Cab Company. Handsome Cabs? A recently established company with a fleet of horse-drawn carriages catering mainly for Concordia's wealthier residents. This paper is a fragment of a receipt for a handsome cab ride in New Haven. A rather handsome clue, Ace. We're looking for a killer who uses handsome cabs. We're developing a clear picture of both our killer and our victim, Ace, but we need more evidence. It's obvious that Mr. Poe is not a happy man, seeking medical and spiritual guidance on a regular basis. I'm inclined to agree, Ace, if the victim was paying frequent visits to the doctor's office, it's probably worth another look. I would agree with that sentiment. Look at all those stars. And a lot of you guys were there. Some of them were not. Dude, why are you doing Mysteries of the Past? Dude, why not? Why not? Well, that's obviously a clue. Tentacle, top hat, doctor's bag. Dog bowl, where's the telephone? Telephono. Yeah. Adam is not the killer because he confessed he is the killer. Now, he could be in the final case, but not this case. That locked doctor's bag must belong to Dr. Jones. I love to pry into someone's private belongings, but perhaps it contains something relevant to this case. And this appears to be a broken device of some description, Ace. We will need to put it back together to work out what it is. All valid points. Maximilian Poe. These look like binoculars. What the devil is this contraption, Ace? The plaque says it belongs to the victim, but besides that, I'm at a loss. These are exactly the newfangled gadgets that Charlie loves to play with. Let's have him a look at this device. Oh, if we can only tell him what we know from the future. That's gotta be K X. There we go. There we go. R. Nope, that's definitely not it. That's definitely it. Key and peel. <laughs> hey, is that a death certificate inside the doctor's bag? Certificate is from Valerie Poe. Valeria Poe, the victim's wife. But some of the details are obscure. Let's dust it off. Post haste. Like I said, something tells me uh, there's something fishy about her death. Chronic respiratory. Oh. You revealed a message written by Dr. Jones on Valeria's death certificate. There was nothing more I could have done. Keen observation, Ace, the message was written in calligraphy. Add that to the doctor's profile. For now, let's go ask the good doctor about this certificate. Oh, 
Well, Sin Trooper Ace, you just caught me in time. I was about to hop into a handsome cab to get my suits to the laundry. They're beginning to smell like mothballs. How can I help you? We'd like you to explain this message you wrote on Valerie Poe's death certificate. Ah, yes. I probably should have told you about that. The truth is, as time passed, Mr. Poe's sadness turned to anger. He eventually started to blame me for Valeria's death. Poe demanded to see his wife's death certificate. It was nothing more than a tragic case of a young woman with a respiratory condition, but he refused to believe me. And someone like Poe accusing you of negligence could have destroyed your practice, could it not? Wait, what are you insinuating? I have nothing to hide. My patients trust my skills as a physician. My reputation is above reproach. Well, I do hope you're telling the truth, Dr. Jones. If Sin Trooper Ace discovers that you were involved in Mr. Poe's murder, your next posting will be in the prison infirmary. Boom! Shakalaka. Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in 12 hours from Pitching Ace 88. Au revoir. Alright, folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back. Let's finish this off. Well, you've outdone yourself this time, Ace. Bring me that device. We're happy to have indulged in your enthusiasm, Charlie, but what is it exactly? Well, this is a stereoscope, a new device that allows someone to look at three-dimensional photography. I've seen them in the camera shops, dreadfully expensive. Oh, three-dimensional photographs? What the devil are you talking about? Well, two almost identical images are placed side by side in the device. Because each image has a slightly different perspective, the lenses manipulate the light, giving the image depth. It's ingenious. There have been stunning developments in the photography photographic technology is. This is almost as exciting as those spectacular moving pictures. Well, this is all marvelously fascinating, but how is it, how is any of it relevant to Mr. Poe's murder? Ah, well, this stereoscope it was hiding a secret. Inside the viewer, I found this photograph, which must have been the last image Poe was looking at. Great Scott, Ace, and I do mean that literally. That's the picture of Mr. Poe's kitchen hand, Audrey Scott. And she appears to be getting dressed. Well, this is a rather delicate matter, but I'm afraid we have no choice but to ask Miss Scott about this. I told you guys. Miss Scott, would you care to tell us about this photograph? It's quite, how would you call it, risque? Oh, good heavens, where did you get that? Put it away at once. We found this photo inside Mr. Poe's stereoscope. Ugh, I knew that Mr. Poe, Master Poe had an interest in me, but I didn't know it had gone that far. An interest in you? Well, there was nothing untoward going on. Master Poe was acting with complete honor, but it was clear that he was starting to develop feelings for me and didn't know what to do with them. As time passed, there were moments where he seemed happy again, when his grief wasn't so strong. I was flattered, of course, but it made me feel rather awkward. It wouldn't have been proper, a man of his standing with a servant girl like me. I smelled like mothballs, for goodness sake. And I wanted him to stop, but who was I to say anything? It wasn't my place to make trouble. Well, I do hope you haven't landed yourself in more trouble than you were trying to avoid, Miss Scott. Or in modest pictures will be the least of your worries. Well, painful grief seems to be central to this case. Ace broken hearts are a powerful motive for murder. The victim's brother-in-law had been... Vincent Lorenzo traveled halfway across the world to say goodbye to his darling sister. Well, Maximilian himself, though broken with grief, angrily blamed Dr. Jones for his wife's death. It should be noted, however, that the victim was also starting to feel affection for his kitchen hand, Audrey Scott. It's a baffling case, Ace, but they often are, when matters of the heart are concerned. Ace, I've just discovered Maximilian Poe's recently changed his last will and testament. He altered the beneficiaries of his estate just two days before he was killed. Yep. How much do I bet that it was his uh, brother-in-law found out that he actually liked the kitchen hand and he killed him? Makes sense. But we'll see if my uh, theories are confirmed in Chapter 3. This has been Pitching Ace 88. Over and out.